sportsman drag racing features cars from all walks of life. Whether it's a furious door slammer or a cranked up sedan ripping down the quarter mile, the sportsman categories honour determination and consistency. The series arrives at the Perth Motorplex and it's early days in the championship that will still span the country. It's variety at its fastest and it's set to explode here in the West. It's been a very warm weekend over here in the West, but the Nitro Max event has delivered some incredible results so far. And it's the Aeroflow Sportsman Series that takes centre stage here at this 402 metre arena. And we're going to check out some of the highlights from earlier racing in the top comp eliminator bracket. We get a lot of blown cars racing here, a lot of funny cars and door slammers. So this guy in particular is going to be one to watch. We've got Rob Pilkington in the LU Tech funny car. Nice strong burnout, it's good to have Rusty Gregory alongside me. Yeah, thanks Chad, it's uh, fantastic to be here again this weekend. A bit of a different opportunity running top comp this weekend instead of the usual competition eliminator and, uh, and separate group one categories. But uh, Rob Pilkington on a solo pass goes well and truly under his index there. 638 was the index, 605 was the run. He's knocking on the door of that national record which is down around the 590s now. Moving on to the next pair of cars, it is Ryan Moresby up against Pino Priolo in the far lane. Yes, Pino Frollo, we've seen him doing a fair bit of door slammer racing. That one was tight at the finish line. Pino chasing down Moresby for the wind light and just, just goes under that index. Ground format and talking about door slammer races, here's a couple of heavy hitters from the West, especially in that far lane. Oh, absolutely. That is your six-time national champion, John Zappier, taking on Dan Gregorini, who's got new setup this season. He's got the PSI on board, the new supercharger, really trying to make it work. And unfortunately, red lights his chances away right there. John Zappia, it's a good run, 6 double zero, but it's all for naught. Gregorini gets a win courtesy of that red light, but not a good run. He won't get through to one of the finals of that. Tough conditions, courtesy of the heat of his first session for the top top guys. The track temperature being so high this weekend, up around the well and truly over 40 degrees, 50 degrees at times, has been quite difficult to get a hold of. And that's exactly what's happening with the Lewis Falcon. And unfortunately, unfortunately had to button that one off early, but gets that wind light anyway. But the important thing is you have to go under your index in this three round format that they run in top comp over here in WA. Yeah, there's a lot of shake, rattle, roll, and a lot of tyre smoke as well this weekend. Another door slam and heavy hit it coming out now. That is Murray O'Connor. He's taking on Craig Lashby in the funny car. O'Connor just streaking away at the finish line and a 6.07 on that 6.26. That's a pretty solid run and that's going to put him into contention. Yes, you got to get the wind light. That's the first box that you could have ticked, you have to run under that index time, that handicap time. Simon Travellini in the board and Shane Weston, a young man in the dragster, red lighting on this occasion. Yeah, that's a shame because he was on a pretty good run there. It went 561 on the 601, but the red light, that negates all that effort. The 649 for Travellini, not going to be good enough to get him through to one of the finals here tonight. Those sparks you saw actually from the big headers that stick out from underneath the motor as he bounces his way across the finish line. Adam Margin, former top alcohol racer himself, running on that top alcohol index. So it's going to be tough for him this weekend. And Steve Aldridge. Yeah, it's a very mean-looking Chevy, this one. 071 gives the advantage to the door slammer, but the alcohol drags to the big top-end charge. Big driving job as well from Margin. 5.63 on the 6.0 run, running the same index as uh, as what we saw from Weston in that pass earlier. But he gets the win, and he's going on to uh, probably one of the next rounds. A and B finals, they run in top comp, so you've got to win the race, but you've got to go way under that index if you want to get to the A final. Craig Anderson now in the altered, running double A altered here this weekend. Ooh. And it's doing what alters do. Doesn't <laughs> go straight, but he crosses the line and 8.03 on the 6.40. Not going to be good enough this time around. So top comp turning it on to the motorplex. The Aeroflow Sportsman Series. The action continues with the semi-finals eliminations racing. This is Brett Glover in this very cool RX-7 Mazda. And we're into the semi-finals right now, Rusty, in Supercom. Yeah, absolutely, running the, uh, the little rotary power plant in this car. It's got that really distinctive note, doesn't it? It's just, uh, it's awesome to see it. And, well, racing up against the big thumping V8 this <laughs> time around. That's Colin Mortimer over there in the far lane. In the Oldsmobile Cutlass, one of my favorite race cars of all time. I love that shape. Pro stock fans in right next to me, so we love this car. 
something old against something very new. 008 light for Mortimer. 013 for Glover's good, but he got out near the centre line early. Yeah, that's not where you want to be, especially in a high powered turbo car. Mortimer goes through 875 on the 855. Doesn't dip under his index, which is good for him going into the final. He's on his way to the final, and who he'll race there will be Jake Chasey. Chasey coming up next for solo. Let's just check out this launch from the Mazda. It spun the wheels nicely. It looked like it was having fairly good wheel speed up till about half track but it just creeped over didn't it yeah as soon as it hit the wheelie bars just went straight towards the center line wisely got off the throttle which is uh, what you need to do with these cars when the guys attempted to try and drive through it but Mortimer no problems whatsoever straight in the center of the lane and he's on his way to the final as Rusty said he'll be up against Jake Chasey because Chase is in a solo and this is one car that could potentially be setting national records this weekend yeah, it's gone sub-national record in qualifying and is looking to back that up here today. And, well, what a fantastic performance it's been as well. Won't be seeing a national record in this pass, you think, because he's on the solo, he doesn't want to go hurting that index and already looks to roll off and the Commodore. Sounds sweet, though. Yeah, just coast across the line, 1097 on that 976. Doesn't affect his index for the final round. Basically, same deal as Colin Mortimer going into the final. Neither of them have did their index, so promises to be a fantastic battle in the final round. So just to explain that, that's exactly what Rusty's saying. There's no point for him to go under right now. That's exactly why he's just backed it off, coasted across the finish line. This is a very pristine venue now in its 14th season of racing in the West as we move over to competition bike, another category that really booms over here in WA, massive entries, a lot of street bikes to be said, but it's good to see a couple of out and out drag bikes. And this is a good example of one of each. Yeah, absolutely, that's uh, Ross Green in the orange, or on the orange bike I should say, he's gonna be taking on Ross Smith. Both running similar sort of bikes, but Ross Green on the seat comp bike running off the index of 872. Ross Smith running off an 874 with the seat A bike class index. So the bus are in the far lane. Big, long extension out the back, looks cool. Yeah, very, very difficult motorcycles to ride these, especially launching them consistently at the start. What you've got to remember, there's no big wheelie bar out the back to try and rely on to keep the weight transfer on the front end. Well, this time around, it's a fantastic race. Have a look. Oh, oh, oh. And Smith gets there, has to hurt his index to do it. That goes 862 on the 874 index. Green and 867 on an 872. Fantastic side-by-side -side race all the way across the finish line. That is what index racing is all about. You can see Ross number one sticking his rear end right up high on the back of the bike there. It's actually a double seat that these TLR shaped Suzuki's have and you can move up to hopefully bring your helmet down lower and get right in behind what is made of that little tiny windshield in the front. And then the pisser I can't believe the top end of that bike to chase it down. Yeah, it really came home strong, didn't it? Next up, it will be Stan Lyle on a solo pass running the deep straight bike pass index. Again, no wheelie bar out the back to try and head that front end on the ground. So you've really got to be perfection when you're letting out the clutch trying to get this thing to launch cleanly off the start line. Love the sound of 600cc motorbikes at the motorplex. They really scream, but again, no point going under that 1026 on a solo. So Stan Lyle just rolling off it on the R6 and we'll go through to the final. It seemed like he actually ran the bike right out the back door then. There was no sitting up. Maybe a little bit soft in the front half of the racetrack, but uh, still sets him up, sets himself up very well for the final round coming up. Does not touch that index. Moving on to Junior Dragster now, and, well, the future stars of both the Aeroflow Sportsman Series and, of course, the Andrew Drag Racing Series. First pair up, it is going to be Connor McClure taking on Jasmine Slammer. So, a couple of second-gen races here. Al McClure, we're used to seeing him racing in competition, or now top comp over here in the West, in the big funny car that has been blitzing national records. And uh, the daughter of Troy Slammer in the other lane with the snuggle puss along for the ride. If your surname was Slammer, wouldn't you change your first name to Dawn? You, you, you just have to do it. I couldn't help myself. Hopefully that's where she's heading one day for a door slammer. And unfortunately, it's a red light. Or two red lights, but... Whoever does it first in this case is the loser and unfortunately that one will be put down the glasses and that one will go to slow -mo. Yeah, good run there though. Uh, an 831 on the 825 for McClure, 815 on the 800. Wouldn't it be good enough if it was a side-by-side -side race, but the, the foul, the red light, that settled it right at the start line. As we move on to the next pair of cars, it is McKenna Begg in the purple dragster 
and she will be taking on Dylan Pettigrew over there on the far side of the racetrack. So Mackin is coming, uh, is coming a, long, a long way now for mum and dad who have been racing in Super Sedan. And she's got the big task of chasing it down. There's age brackets that separate the races in these categories. The younger you are, the slower you have to go. And Mackin is doing a good job to chase down and pass Pettigrew, the 817 and the 810. It's pretty good racing, takes the win. And just a reminder that these kids race to the half track markers. So over the eighth mile, not going the whole way down the quarter mile. Yeah, it just scales things back a little bit for them. Doesn't mean those uh, little Bridgeton Stratton engines have to really scream as hard at the top end of the racetrack. Moving on to the semi-finals now of one of the most hotly contested classes here at the Perth Motorplex. It is Super Street. And remember, we're racing for national points here this weekend as well. So it, things are really starting to heat up. So a pair of Commodores, just different vintages on the start line right now. And it is... Uh, Nicholas Rowe taking on Jay Jeffries. What a uh, fantastic race we have on our hands here. 11 one the self-nominated dial-in for Jay Jeffries. And Nicholas Rowe on the far side of the racetrack actually beat his sister to get into this <laughs> round of racing. That's going to be interesting. Now he's hanging out on the start line just playing some games maybe, trying to find those staging beams. Let's see if he's going to just edge those extra seven inches in the full stage. He does. 11-11 for dial-in for Rowe. So that's the time he's not allowed to go under. Really good lights on both sides of the racetrack there. <laughs> They're already looking at each other. It's a staring game at half track. Oh, <laughs> Green Commodore is in front He's and still looking at him. he doesn't get there. Breaks out 11-1-6 on the 11-1-8 for Jeffries. 11-1-7 on the self-nominated self handicap, I should say, but 11-1-1. Fantastic race there. Now, just explain to people at home, Chad, why is it that the guy who went quicker lost the race there? Because in Group 3 racing, you're not allowed to go under that time that you nominate. And so that's why we had Jay looking over, trying to see where Nicholas was. It's about now that he starts looking for him. He gets to half track. There we go. You see the white helmet, left of screen. He's saying, where's Nicholas? Am I in front? Do I have to chase him down? Can I back off? And he didn't back off enough. That was the key. But to be fair, I mean, how much more could he afford to really back off in a situation like that? He looked like a bobblehead doll. Just <laughs> swiveling backwards and forwards. Greg Caton on the start line now. And that fantastic looking Holden. It's a, it's a great semi-final round if you're a Holden fan. We've had two Commodores and now another Bordor Holden on track right now. Solo pass. You can't afford to go under that time on a solo because there's no one to lose to. Let's see how close he gets. 11-19 on the 11-18. He's that's dialed in pretty nice. well. Yeah, that's pretty good come finals time. So he'll be pushing on through to the final tonight. And, well, it's pretty easy when you get that solo pass, isn't it, Rusty? Because you can have a shot. You can have a real crack at running it out the back door and seeing just how close you are to your dialing. Absolutely, that is the case. And you can get a crack at the Christmas tree as well as the racetrack. There's two elements of every race that you really need to take into account. Next up, it is modified bike time. And we have got Luke Newhoff, a, a guy who was familiar to a lot of faces around their place. Uh, used to work for Andrew at the Australian National Drag Racing Association and uh, stepping back into the racer's shoes this season. Yeah, it's cool to see him back racing, actually. I know he's a passionate motorcycle drag racing fan. That was his dad. That was just standing behind the bike, a former national record holder in uh, a modified bike as well. So he comes from a good pedigree. His mum, Julie, did a lot of racing back in the days as well on her Kawasaki, I think it was. So Luke's definitely a formidable force. But it was Roger Harris, 894 the dial-in for Harris. But Luke's got the start line advantage. Yeah, he's got almost four hundredths of a second up his sleeve here. And you can see looking over at each other again and just gets him on the finish line. Nick, Luke Newoff gets the win on an 8.52 on an 8.49. Great dolly your own racing there. Harris an 8.99 yeah. on an 8.94. Not a bad run by any stretch of the imagination, but this is how close it was at the finish line. Oh, very cool shot. Oh, here in Feather the Throttle, right on the finish line. He's good, isn't he? He's been off the bike for a whole year and just hops back on it and just cleans this one up lovely. And as you said, Rusty, at about half track, just had a bit of a glance over. I balled him at half track and just thought, I just need to back it off right now. See him stand, sit up in the seat, let the wind hit his chest, washes that little bit of speed off, takes the wind light. Justin Townsend now on a solo pass, another solo pass in our semi-finals. Another one running this theme modified bike class, another very tough motorcycle indeed, dialing in with an 8.86 this time around. And taking the meandering path to the finish line, it sort of ducked towards the centre line right off the start line, 
but across the finish line and as he tested his dialing well he's just breathing on it an 888 on an 886 dialing that's pretty much where you want to be going into the final round well stick around because on the other side of this the aeroflow sportsman series is set to continue with eliminations racing we'll learn a little bit more about one of drag racing's newcomers The youth is alive and kicking here in the West, and for Teenage Outlaws racer Rhiannon Allison, she's here to prove that she's more than just a pretty face. My first taste of drag racing when I was 11. Um, I followed through until I was 16, and my family and I relocated to Perth, um, and I was Dad's crew chief for two years, and then jumped into drag, so I'm now licensed, and here I am racing in senior ranks and the national meeting. The first pass I did from start to finish, was, I can't explain it, it was just, it's just not as the same as a junior, like it's different the whole way, like you back in the seat, um, you pull the shoots in a whole other race as well, it's just so much to learn as well, and the last few meetings I've had, this is my sixth meeting, I've learned so much, um, you know, a few cars haven't gone down real well and shoots haven't come out and you know, I had to use my own common sense to pull the car up and be safe. There's a few girls coming in now, it's really good and stepping up even to like, you know, the smaller classes like Modified and but it's good to see girls stepping up to Outlaws and Top, top Alcohol and things like that, so it's, it's good. I want to get to a Top Alcohol funny car. Um, the drag car is great, I love it and it started me off and Dad's always raced Alteds. We sold the Altered to get a drag for me to learn in but now I just, I've got the noise and I love it so I want to go to a Top Alcohol drag star. Matt Nolte having a sit down with Ryan and Allison, originally from Sydney, now calling Perth home, and good to see her racing in supercharged Outlaws. Unfortunately for Ryan, and she was out in the earlier rounds of eliminations. It's such a tough category, this one, Outlaws, especially over here in the West. And this is an unusual one, isn't it? Good to see a Lamborghini racing in supercharged Outlaws. And comes complete with the scissor doors. It's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, there's a few of these cars racing around the country as well. Al Alf Chiatri over in Sydney has got one also racing in supercharged outlaws, but it's not the kind of body style that you see a huge amount of on a drag strip. And it's surprising, really, because when you look at it, the thing is it, it's shaped like a doorstop, really. It's perfect aerodynamics for drag racing, and they've accentuated the lines there. Greg James is a real hitter in supercharged outlaws over here in Perth. It's a shame that the door slammer rules uh, are so exact that you have to run either an Australian body or a US body because it'd be so cool if we had some Lamborghinis or Mercs running around in Door Slammer. Or even your late model American cars as well. Yeah. You know, we've seen him in Pro Stock, why can't we see him in Door Slammer? But that's an argument for another day. <laughs> Greg James is on it from the start line. 011 on the tree, very good reaction time. And a 735 on a 732, he has got this car sorted. Yeah, that's nice. It's good to see a very subtle injector hack compared to Lamborghini that runs around on the east coast of the country. Looks more like E.T. sitting on a bonnet. Yeah, you need a step ladder to dust the top of it. <laughs> but, uh, no, fantastic run for Greg James. A bit of bodywork just yeah. flapping around there, just near the headers, but uh, no problems there. He's on his way to the final. He's going to take on, well, either one of these races. And fantastic to see Craig Dirk is all the way over from uh, Victoria in this car, the HK. This thing is just flat out cool, Chad. Yeah, and if you're going to come all the way across the Nullarbor to race, you want to go around. So I think that's just a general rule. Not too many East Coasters coming over for the first of the Aeroflow rounds here in WA. The Western Nats, which happens later in the year, will no doubt be a different story. But good to see he's made it all the way through to the semis. And he's going to be taking on Kelvin Lyle over there in the far lane of the racetrack. Another body that we don't see a huge amount of, the 37 Chef. There's a few of them floating around. Of course, Pino Priolo and Dorslaner and Top Top here this weekend. But uh, again, it's one of these bodies that is really, really designed for drag racing. Very low, very sleek, very aerodynamic. And, uh, well, doesn't that thing look wicked? It's a mean looking car, this one. Injector hat sitting high above it as well. Pretty contrasting body styles when you have a look at it. I mean, Craig Gertie's, no disrespect, but that thing has got the aerodynamics of a block of flats. And you put it alongside that very sleek 37 Chevy, it's just complete contrast but you know in the end they run side by side at the finish line and that's what dial your own racing is all about into full stage we go the lights will count down at different times it's all part of the sportsman extravaganza and it's a big chase 
but the Monaro is going to be there first. And wow, how good's that? 7.37 on the 7.37 dial in. Gertie is getting that win with a very impressive package. Just 3,000 off, off his dial in. Yeah, and with an 0-1-2 reaction time as well. 15 thousandths of a second away from perfect that run. Kelvin Lyle, no visible problems from him. He's a little bit lazy off the start line with an 0-1-2 reaction time. But 6.76 wasn't good enough this time around. Typical, isn't it? You'd win races with a package like that, that on other days. Yep. Uh, you go up against a guy with an 015 package and you just get belted. It's one of the problems with drag racing. You've always got to beat the guy or girl who's in the other lane. And sometimes, you've just got to admit, they're better than you are. Moving into Modified now, that's Michael Lanigan, the Sea Sport Marine Drags. A very, very nicely presented car, that one. Going to be going on a solo pass here for his berth through to the final. So this is another Group 3 category. So once again, times are picked by the teams. And then they're allowed to go as close to that time without going under it, pretty much. But Ooh. being a solo pass, you can red light, you can cross the center line, you can do whatever he wants, pretty much. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that kind of a red light, though. <laughs> 0.256, that does not set you up very that well. That not so bad. Well, the, the, the other end's pretty good. But uh, 7.89 on 7.89, that's the way you want to do it. But the reaction time, that's, uh, that's a day and a half early there for Mike Lanning. So modified is the category for alters, drags, hot rods even. And this one's going to be a dragster versus altered affair. And we have one of the very best at the Perth Motorplex coming up now. Just 20 years old, this kid in the altered Sam Treasure. And he's looking already for his third win of the season in the Cleveland Express. He's been very quick in that man top left. Daryl won one of these silver Christmas trees. We're well, going for the silver Christmas trees again, Rusty. Well, his dad won one of those silver Christmas trees at Ravenswood back in 1980. Wow. Wow, he's got a very good uh, family pedigree when it comes to drag racing. Of course, Ray Treasure over in Sydney, very, very well known around the place as well. And I know always uh, listens very keenly to the audio cast from the Perth Motorplex whenever there's an event on. So, Dragster versus Altered Battle here. Shane Wynn, former national champion in Superstand, very, very tough competitor in his own right. 031 reaction oh, time to an oh, 030, oh, oh. one thousandth of a second difference. We got a race on our hands. The numbers are there, the parachute comes out for Treasure and he gets it by just that much. Five thousandths of a second he goes over that dial in compared to the 17,000 in the other lane. That's a winning margin of just 13 thousandths of a second to Sam Treasure. What a drag race. That is a great example of what Dolly Road Racing is all about. Side by side at the finish line, great reaction times, great driving. I take my hat off to both of them. Super Sedan semi-finals on track now, and this is another Group 3 category. Two very different cars here because we've got a former series champion here in the West, in Paul Down, in the Commodore. And watch for the big wheel stands from the Fallon Ute. This thing is cool. Yeah, very, very cool looking car. And in fact, on both sides of the tree, uh, very, very cool cars. 822 is a self-nominated handicap for Paul Down. On the other side, the Ute. 928, you can see it on the window in the shoe polish. So, well, oh, virtually oh, a full oh. second head start for the Falcon Newt, and the Commodore has to chase him down. Oh, pulled down, a little bit of a wiggle at half track, did not lift, and didn't get there. He actually broke out. 819 is under that 822, and it's actually just, just a double breakout that was worse for the Commodore. There's the big wheel stand from Fallon. So, a double breakout this time, the first one that we've seen on the show so far tonight. Yep, so in this case it is whoever breaks out or goes under their nominated handicap oh. by the least. Great launch for the Falcon, just spectacular racing. And the Falcon on his way through oh. to the final round. There's that little wiggle from Paul Down and he managed to keep the thing pegged. If he'd actually lifted to that situation he would have won the race, but it wasn't to know that half track when you're flying down the racetrack. Next car up on a solo pass it is Lorenzo Galotto. And on a solo pass, so he'll go through to the final round to take on Lee Fallon. But again, good opportunity to test the race track here. Dialing with an 808 and reaction time double oh. 001, one thousandth of a second from perfect. Should have saved it for the final. <laughs> 
always the problem, isn't it? I wonder if he'll have the same confidence to come out and do that again. And that is not a bad package. An 0-1-1 package, and he's gone and wasted on the solo. Man, that's... Uh, well, I mean, at least he knows he can do it now. Yeah. In fact, there was a little bit of a nudge just a little bit further in before the tree came down. Didn't bump out of the beams, but still 0-0-1 on the tree. Fantastic run at the top end. He's going to be a tough customer in the final round. And so for the first time this season in the Aeroflow Sportsman categories, we're going to go racing in the finals. And it's going to start, Rusty, with the juniors. Well, that's where we should start. These guys and girls, the future of drag racing and the amount of races that we've seen come out of this class, not just in the professional classes, but also in the Aeroflow Sportsman series. It, it is absolutely phenomenal. It's doing the job that it was intended to do, and that is develop the future talent of the sport. I'll tell you what, it's developing some very fine young junior female racers because this is an all-girl race, showing that it's not just about the boys in drag racing. It's not uncommon these days, let's be honest. Jasmine Slammer dialing in with an 8.01 this time oh. around and an 8.12 dial in for McKenna Begg. And giant, giant red light for Jasmine. That's a massive red light. That's heartbreaking, but uh, McKenna will get the win and would have broken out, but that's okay. I saw Tyron Begg in the background. That's Dad going absolutely crazy on the start line, and that's a giant red light. That's the pressure of finals right there. The silver Christmas tree, <laughs> there's Tyron, top left, going absolutely nuts. But uh, that's pretty good for the Begg family to take, uh, I think that'll be their first overall win. And so let's have a look at your Aeroflow Drag Racing Series points now. McKenna Begg, no surprises there, on 100 points, leading the way. Jasmine Slammer in second. Dylan Pettigrew, Connor McClure, Natalie Bishop, Michael Naylor and Rocky Lamantina. Rounding out your top seven, of course, that's after two rounds of the championship with the round out event at Portland earlier on in the year. And yes, that is the son of Phil Lamantina. Rocky Lamantina, we'll talk about second generation races, they keep on coming. And Craig Caton coming up now in the four-door Holden, taking on, well, another four-door Holden, the Commodore, on the far side of the racetrack. This promises to be a fantastic race. So Nicholas Rowe with the Thornley Automotive's Commodore 11.11. .11. So that's pretty easy to remember. Can't go under that number, remember? 11.19, so it's an eight hundredths of a second head start to Big Red. Holden near screen. That's what we seen the first one. We should have left first anyway, but Nicholas Rowe is the one who jumped first and red lights. The pressure of championship drag racing right there, and that's not the first red light we've seen. We saw one in junior dragster as well, so hopefully we don't see too many more decided that way. Nicholas Rowe oh. wastes an 11-11 on an 11-11 dial-in, and Kate, well, a huge breakout, 11.04 on an 11.19 just legged it out the back door, but it doesn't matter. The red light right there hanging on the Christmas tree, that decides the race. Left a cherry on the tree, as they say in this industry. That's disappointing, too. After taking out his sister in the quarterfinals, he's going to be going home without the silver Christmas tree tonight. So Craig Caton goes to 100 points in the Aeroflow standings. Still a good bag of points for Nicholas Rowe. Uh, it's a long championship now. This whole series will be traversing the country uh, it doesn't end at the Winter Nationals like it used to anymore, though. So, a lot of rounds left for that still to play out. Moving into competition bike now. This promises to be a fantastic matchup. It is Ross Smith taking on Stan Lyle. And, well, two no wheelie bar bikes. Gotta love that. Massive difference in capacity in terms of the motors here. You've got a 600 up against a 1300 in the big Suzuki high of Ross Smith. So, 874 is his handicap, he's allowed to go under that because this is Group 2 racing. Yeah, it's all about your relevant class indexes here. So, theoretically, the further you go under the index, the more chance you've got of winning the race. But they still have to be able to cut good reaction times, and a lot of these races are decided on the start line. Great reaction time for the red bike, 062. Big, oh. big sleep on the line for Ross Smith. He's got some work to do. He sat there and saw another amber, pretty much, with a point four, but I think he just knew he had the legs. I think that's what that was about. 8.59, he goes way under the index, and Stan Lyle couldn't quite get close to his 10.26. So that's probably what was going on there for Ross Smith. I think he knew that he probably had the ability to chase down the little R6 Yamaha, 
gave himself plenty of time. He's coming up after two red lights, remember, in that lane. So it's probably wise that he just had a good look at that green light, set sail, chased him down, taps it on the front, says, good job, bike, good job, good job, bike. You'll get a bath later on. <laughs> Bit tight there, I was sort of a bit lazy on the, the light because I knew um, I had a fair bit on Stanley. Um, thanks to the track staff putting up with the conditions today, shocking, but uh, everyone got through it, so well done. Cheers. Ross Smith, a very happy man after finishing second in the points last season. He does lead the way here after this weekend on 110, the extra 10 points coming courtesy of the top qualifying effort. Stan Lyle in second and a whole host of the other very tough races behind him. We're going to go to a break, and on the other side, we're going to come back to the Perth Motorplex with a final are set to continue. Stick with us here on Speed Week. Super Comp's Jake Chasty has drag racing running through his veins. Growing up in the pits with his old man, former Superstock champ Jeff Chasty, the young speed demon has arrived at Nitro Max looking to make a statement for 2014, and he definitely has the pedigree to pull it off. I used to race dirt carts for four years and I was champion for two and that was mint. Yeah, he raced nearly every weekend and yeah, then one day I had enough and thought I'll just jump in the race car and I used to race my ute. And then yeah, we bought this and built this up. It's pretty well just a BX model with an LS motor which is highly done up. There's none out there. It's the first car in its class. I got involved with drag racing through my old man, just helping around the shed and screwing on the weekend with him and I enjoyed it. Dad used to race his old black HQ ute many years ago when I was young and then he built his G gas car and raced that for lots of years and two champions with that and then yeah he's raced that for many years and then we built this. With his one of a kind ride the Chasty Motorsport driver has his sights firmly set on a silver Christmas tree this weekend and with mum, dad and younger brother in the pits Jake can focus on getting down the corner mile through to victory lane. You just try to block everything out, you just try to focus as much as you can on the tree and just try not to red light and just try to cut a real killer light and just trying to watch the shift light, get all the shifts and just focus and everything. Just try to black everything out. Just think, yeah, just try to race. Think you're the only one on the racetrack. Forget about the other driver and just, yeah, just try to focus. He's one guy that could be going all the way tonight, Jake Chasty, and he's on track right now alongside Colin Mortimer in this Super Comp final. A bit of a hybrid between competition, the cars that aren't blown, and then our Super Stock categories. If you're a little bit confused as to what Super Comp's all about, there he is. Young man, and 976, his handicap. Trying to go under that and take the win line. It's fantastic to see the young guys coming through the ranks these days, isn't it? You know, we, we do see a lot of young guys in the pro categories as well, but to see them coming through, earning their stripes, so to speak, in the sportsman, in the Aeroplay Sportsman Series, I should say, and uh, and then moving on to the uh, the professional categories as the time progresses. Colin Mortimer on a, well, had a pretty good run earlier on in the semi-finals. He's got an index of 8.55 this time around, and he's going to be doing the chasing this time around. Chasing Chasty is what it's all about in Supercop, the final. Ooh, whole shot reaction time to the cutlass Mortimer. He's doing his best to chase down Chasty, and he's not going to get there though. And the Holden gets across the line first, a 950 on the 976 index. Absolutely takes a meat cleaver to that index. And man, oh man, Jake Chasty. Well, he's your winner here at the Nitro Max event. He was having a look over his left shoulder. He didn't even really need to. I don't think he was worrying about maybe protecting his record. It's the only reason I would imagine he'd be looking over, apart from just pure curiosity. Not a bad effort from Mortimer. But to tell you what, Chasty's leaving with more than just the silver Christmas tree. He's also nailed himself a national record this weekend, as well as being top qualifier. That is a big bag of points. It's a big bag of points. 120 after one round. Colin Mortimer in second. Brett Glover, Errol Quartermain. And another interesting name on that list is Daniel Camilleri, a guy who was a long way up the points last season, looking to improve again here in season 2014. It's a real crowd favourite. Supercharged Outlaws, and this car in particular is a real crowd favourite. The Lamborghini is back out once again, and it's... Well, this is a really interesting matchup because it's WA versus the East Coast in this one. 
I have never thought that you could park a car next to a HK Holden and make it look like it was two storeys high. <laughs> but this Lamborghini seems to do a very good job of that. This thing is so low, so sleek, and has been running some really, really good times. When you look at the, uh, the semi-final buy run that he had, he wasn't that far off perfect. He's doing a great job of driving this car, and the car is performing flawlessly. But you've got to look at it. Craig Gertie's all the way over from the East Coast. He wants to make this count, and he wants to go home with that silver Christmas tree. 7.35, the dial-in for Gertie's. And the difficulty that you have coming over to a different track, it might look like a straight line, but different air quality, different rubber, different traction. So all these things will affect how close Gertie's can get to running that nominated time. So when you can come to a different track and still be successful and still be consistent, that just shows well, one experience, <laughs> but just two professionalism for me. Almost a heads-up race, this one. Dial-in of the 7.34 for the Lamborghini, a 7.35 bought the HK, so get to the naked eye, this will be a heads-up race. And oh. a oh, big red light, huge red light for Craig Gerties. That's a heartbreaking way to lose it. Hands the win to the Lamborghini, who runs a 7.35 on a 7.34. Just really puts the nail in the coffin there for Craig Gerties. But a 7.42 on a 7.35, a valiant run with the losing effort. Wasn't a bad light for the Lamborghini as the team shake hands across the centre line. Always good to see, but they'll be sorely disappointed that uh, the Monaro boys come all the way to red light in the final, which is not the ideal way to go out. And again, another red light in the left lane at the finals tonight. I'm not suggesting a conspiracy of any sorts, but definitely on this occasion, I think they're all just sucking themselves a bit out in that left-hand lane. Let's go down to Matt Nolte. Gregory James jumps out of the Lamborghini. This is a cool car. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Congratulations and well done on the win. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a scratch there at the end, but we had a good crew and, um, yeah, they all pulled, pulled together and, it was, yeah, got to say it was magic. It was a really good day. Lamborghini, what a combination. It's cool. Yeah, it's a Toss Jassy Lamborghini um, from Blaine Kilby built it back in the States years ago. So, yeah, my brother got it when he was over in the States and, um, yeah, he's too busy to use his toys, so I'm using my younger brother's toys. So, hey. Why not, you know? I'll tell you what, Gregory James will be doing well if he's still on top of the points at the end of the season because this Supercharged Outlaws Championship is going to go all the way to the very last round as it does every single year. And there are seriously some strong East Coast competitors like Craig Gerties just waiting to get their hands on the points when the series arrives back on the East Coast. Moving into the modified bike final round now, and this is going to be a really interesting one. Justin Townsend dialing in with an 888 and has had some good form coming into this final round. But Luke Newhoff, really his first time back on the motorcycle. It's his dad's bike. He's spent some time out of the seat, but it's like he's never been away. <laughs> it's incredible. He's uh, got drag racing in the blood, as young Luke, no doubt about it. I love the modified bike shot. We can see. Oh no! Townsend's not going anywhere. What happened there? Luke's looking around for a, a competitor that he's not going to find, and he nearly runs over the centre line and looking around. Eyes on the road, Lukey. He takes the win, obviously, with that 964, but Townsend was just stranded on the start line and did it spit a chain, maybe? Yeah, there's no chain on that back sprocket, so it does look like it has spat a chain. Weird thing for Luke Newhoff. Oh, oh, yeah, there it goes. The chain goes flying off. But the weird thing was it sounded like Newhoff's bike was popping and banging and, and misfiring its way down the racetrack. So, not really behaving, runs over, you can hear it there, oh, yeah. runs over a second away from his dial-in, but hey, you'd rather be lucky than good, wouldn't you? He's gone from pushing pens to pushing this bike down the quarter mile. Luke Newell, you're the winner. Uh, wrapped with that. Um, I don't think the bike ran too well, but uh, Justin must have stalled on the line. And uh, as a result, the 60-foot Kawasaki's come through, got one of those uh, silver Christmas trees, so we're wrapped solo pass is still rewarding doesn't matter if there's anyone in the lane does it oh he was still there alongside us but um yeah just uh, i don't know what happened to him on the line but we'll take that one and uh grab a few airflow points geez if you could measure irony in strawberries we'd all be drinking smoothies right now because luke newoff's job was to keep the points last year and here he is leading the points unbelievable set of circumstances hops back on the bike and i'd love to see luke and the family come and run some of the big race meetings on the east coast to try and hold on to that championship lead, but well done to Luke Newell. Moving into the modified eliminator final round now, and this promises to be another fantastic race. It is young Sam Treasure in what is really his first season. Now, Mike Lanigan. Something's come off the car, isn't it? GoPro? Yeah, uh, not sure what that is. It does look like a some kind of cameraman or, or something. <laughs> Great eyes for the driver. 
frantically down the track. Great eyes from the driver. I guess he knows that he doesn't want to run over whatever it was. True. Michael Lanigan in the C Sport Marine Dragster. Dialing in with a 7.89 this time around. So his self-nominated handicap at 7.89. So he's up against that altered over in the far lane, which again has been running some really solid seven second times. You can see again, 7.66, the self-nominated handicap there to Sam Treasure. This is gonna be a great one. Oh no, well now the car is failing to get off the start line as well. So whatever that problem was that came down the track, maybe that's what stopped him from getting away. Maybe it wasn't a GoPro, maybe it was something slightly more serious. And Treasure, despite not having anyone to really run against, goes 760, 70s. Pretty pumped up in that car right now, but he's treading the light fantastic there because he could have broken out and given the win back. Now, just looking at what happened with Mike Lanning in there, I, I've got a feeling it might have been some kind of linkage that came off that car. Uh, in the burnout because the car just went nowhere. Green light came on, but Sam Treasure, he is pumped. He's with Matt Nolte. The dream season continues, but you've picked up some big Aeroflow championship points tonight. Sam Treasure, congratulations. That's awesome, Nolte. We're just wrapped with that. We, uh, we we're hoping to pick up some Aeroflow points here so we can travel later in the year. And that happens, so hopefully we do good at the Westerns as well and we can uh, carry through with that. So, Sam Treasure, we know he has a racing pedigree behind him, but he is absolutely proving it here. His first championship season, first championship event, he takes home the silver Christmas tree and the points lead. What a fantastic effort. Time for the final in Super Sedan and Lethal Lee Fallon, the guy that likes to really bring those front tyres up off the hit of the throttle. You'll see it in a second. He's up against uh, the Galottos. This car reminds me a lot of the super stock cars of, of old. In fact, both of them do. We've, we've both seen, well, we've seen both of these types of cars in super stock over the years. And look, why even bother look, having wheelie bars on Look how high they them? are. Look how high those wheelie. I think someone said, you've got to have wheelie bars. And he said, well, I'll show you. You don't have to tell me how low to run them. <laughs> but the thing is, he actually hits them. That's, that's absolutely incredible. A lot of that is to do with the rotation of the diff and things like that as well. But those wheelie bars a long way up. You can see for Galotto a lot further down. Looking at the handicaps here, 925, the nominated handicap for Fallon and Galotto, an 808. So a big, big chase on hand for the Commodore here. Here it goes. Watch for the wheel stand. Let's see if we can hit those wheelie bars. Creeping, creeping into stage. You can really feel the tension. Even a pair of top fuel pilots casting their eye over things. And 006 for Fallon and a red light for Galotto. That is not the way to win races. But the big Falcon's on his way to pick up that silver Christmas tree. Matches the car. Beautiful colour for that one, isn't it? And, uh, well, you would have broken out as well. So that's a bit of a lucky one for Fallon. Let's have a look at the wheel stand. There it is. You hit the wheelie bars and they usually click every time he goes the gear as well. They bounce all the way down the racetrack. It's an unusual setup for Fallon. And Galotto just rocks the beams there. Used up his 001 in the semis. Matt Nolte's with Lee Fallon at the top end of the racetrack. Lee Fallon, a cruisy day for you. Didn't even pop the sheets in that one. Well done. Nah, it was a great day. A um, bit all over the place, but we got there in the end. Yeah, we won the final, so we're absolutely stoked. Yep. It's been one of those weekends. Everybody's hot and tired, but oh, it's all yeah. worth it when you get like this. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, credit to my family and crew. Those guys are awesome. And I've got to say a bit of a shout out to young Jake. He's got a bit of battle on his hands now, and we did this for the young fella. Love you, Jake. Well, there's nothing like a silver Christmas tree, thanks to Andrew and Aeroflow, to really raise the spirits. And Lee Fallon has that championship lead over Lorenzo Galotto, just 20 points in it at the moment. And again, this series will be heading back over to the east coast of the country. And remember, andrew.com.au if you want to keep up to date the rest of the series as it races around and we're social media savvy as well yes we're on twitter and we're on facebook so just look for andra on both of those websites and i am sure that you'll pick up on all the latest news and information in regards to andra championship oh. drag racing big out of shape oh. burnout there for mario o'connor another one of the really nice guys at drag racing mario o'connor just just a fantastic guy and he's got that very tough falcon to boot which he built by himself i might add it's just an unbelievable piece of work up close where pino he brought this car in from the us of a so it's a different way to go racing and people ask, 
Why are the West Aussie door slammer guys so good? Why do they keep winning championships? Why was it always Robin Judd and John Zappia? This is why, because they come out and they race in this top comp bracket against guys that are really hard to beat. And they just get so many laps and they get better and better each time. So that's why we see a lot of very successful door slammer races in the Andrew Drag Racing Series. And the other thing to remember as well is that testing is one thing. With testing, you're more likely to afford a pass. When you're actually in a racing environment, you practice pedaling the car. You practice when it gets out of the groove, steering it back into the centre of the lane. It really does help you hone your race craft, which has a lot to do with why a lot of door slammer guys have been so successful out of Western Australia over the last 10 years or so. Waiting to click on the data logger on Pino Frollo's car. That's why the team still had one hand under the wing. Both running in top door slammer trim. So it's nearly a heads-up race. Away we go. Pino with the start line advantage. Went straight to the centre line. Had a pedal. Exactly what Rusty was talking about earlier. And O'Connor gets the win. 6.08. It's another strong pass for Mario O'Connor. And Pino Prolo unfortunately couldn't take the win in tonight's B final for Top Comp. Yeah, good win in the Constellation final there. You can see just a lot of tyre shake and even a bit of a haze coming out of the overflow tank there for Pino Priolo, which wouldn't be helping things. Mario O'Connor, seems like they calmed down a little bit off the start line and the thing just went from point A to point B and gets the win. A 6.08 in these conditions, very, very warm conditions. Fantastic effort. That leads us up to the A final. And Rob Pilkington in the Alu set, Monte Carlo funny car has been doing the rounds over here in WA for some time. It's a bit of a top alcohol final, but a bit different for the funny car that's getting out of shape and the burnout because he's decided to scale it back a bit to double A funny car. Yeah, reason for that being is probably a little bit of a softer index for him. And when we talk about their, their indexes, they are the, uh, the indexes that they have for the class coming into the event. Now, top alcohol obviously is going to have a faster index than what the double A funny car would be. So he's decided he can just t bring the overdrive back, bring the blower overdrive back a little bit, change a few other things on the car, and essentially it gives him a softer index. It's worked for him because he's through to the final round here and he's running off... Well, a pretty soft, in the end, a, a pretty soft 621 index, yeah. uh, which for this car, we've seen that car run in the 550s in top alcohol trim. So pretty pretty soft in the end. Yeah, and if it was a top alcohol index that he's running against, it would be down to about 590 because that's Gary Phillips' national record in top alcohol funny car. It's a little high-speed camera so they can test the wheel speed or review the wheel speed as the revs come up. Top, top final. Two guys that have gone rounds and even won in the Andrew Drag Racing Series before, but it's all over Red Rover. Red light for Marchant wow. and Pilkington with some big numbers on both sides of the tree. 556 from Marchant. Yeah, and a 584 for Pilkington resets the record for Double A Funny Car. Did his best job of flirting with that centre line, though, but Adam Marchant down into the 550s in that top alcohol dragster. Just an absolute flawless run from those guys. Incredible effort from the West Aussies here. What a shame that he red lit. What a shame. We've seen this guy in Victory Lane in Perth before. That was in top alcohol. Tonight's in top comp. Rob Pilkington, well done. Hey, Matt, thanks for that. Uh, mate, it's been a horrendous weekend, obviously, as you know, with the heat. And we've been struggling a little bit to get the thing to go. But, hey, I think we got it that lap. I don't know what the time was, but, geez, it was a good run. Big field. You guys are getting set for the top alcohol round coming up in a couple of weeks here, too. Yeah, we were tossing up whether to test this meeting in TA Trim, but then when the heat came and... The aeroflow round was sort of opportunity, so I think we might have reset the record for double A. So, yeah, been a good night. So it's been a good effort from Rob Pilkington this weekend. A couple of names that we're going to see in a few weeks' time with the top alcohol guys with Rob Pilkington and Adam Marchant, Mario Connor and Pino Priolo in top door slammer. We'll see them in a few weeks' time over here for the national championship round, the Andrew Drag Racing Championship round. But at the moment, they're on top of the points in top comp. So the Aeroflow Sportsman races have been hitting it out over here at the Perth Motorplex. The Andra Silver Christmas trees have been handed out as well. And you want to check it all out online. Go to andra.com.au. Follow us on Twitter, the friend us or like us on Facebook. And we'll see you next time. And reaction time, double O one. One thousandth of a second perfect. Oh, one one eight. Oh, oh, no. Not going anywhere. What happened there? Luke's looking around for a competitor and he's not going to find. You can hear your irony in strawberry. You don't want to drink it with him right now because Luke Yoff's job was to keep the points last year and here he is leading the points. Unbelievable set of circumstances. Top, top final. All over Red Rover, Red Light for Marchant and Wilkinson. It's big numbers on both sides of the tree. 556 from Marchant. Yeah, and a 584 for Wilkinson resets the record for double-A funny car. Just an absolute flawless run for those guys. Incredible effort for the West Aussie team.
stay with us because after the break, we jump across the ditch to New Zealand for the running, quite literally, of the Highlands 101. You don't want to miss it.